Toxicarcanis, the dog roundworm, it's a parasite. It can grow to 15 centimetres in length in the gut, the span of a small hand. There are male worms and there are female worms, and together they produce eggs, hundreds of them every day. Dog poo. It gets everywhere. To most people it's an abomination, but to Toxocara canis eggs it is a warm cosy nest. Just like a bird's egg needs to develop before it can hatch a baby bird, so a Toxocara egg needs to mature to hatch a baby worm or second stage larva. This process is called embryonation. Importantly, while freshly laid unembryonated eggs are not infectious and can be safely eaten by the bucketful, <coughs> embryonated eggs are highly infectious and should not be eaten at all. The consumed egg is now bursting to hatch. This does not occur in the esophagus where it is only briefly passing through. Neither does it occur in the stomach where the tough shell protects the unhatched larva from the powerful gastric acid. It occurs here, in the small intestine, where conditions are perfect for the second stage larva to emerge and burrow through the intestinal wall into the tiny capillaries of the portal circulation where it will be carried to the liver. Why the liver? Well, so far the sequence of events has been quite straightforward. Now things get a tad complicated. The larva must undergo another molt before it can progress. And for reasons best known to evolution, this must occur in the lungs. And the body's sat-nav has declared that the best way to the lungs from the small intestines is through the liver. Imagine Toxicara exiting the liver, rushing along the hepatic vein, bursting into the majestic motorway that is the vena cava. A couple of heartbeats and she tumbles into the cavernous chamber of the right atrium of the heart through valves into the pounding right ventricle, chaos. More valves open into the pulmonary artery and headlong towards the lungs along ever-shrinking arterioles, bursting into the very air sacs themselves. All this time the larva has been slowly growing. Now it is ready to shed its tight-fitting skin and release the adolescent within, the third stage larva. Within the lung tissue, it continues to grow, sufficiently so to become an irritant, an irritant that will induce coughing. <coughs> and when you've got to get something off your chest, there is only one way to go. Up. Along the windpipe, into the throat, a gulp, and it's back down the esophagus through the stomach, a return to the small intestine for a final molt into a fully-fledged, sexually capable adult worm. Here it meets its soulmate and starts a family and the cycle is complete. And the cycle is just beginning. To summarize, embryonated eggs are swallowed. They hatch in the gut, the larva travel to the liver, then the heart, to the lungs, up the trachea to the throat, back down the esophagus, to the gut again, where they grow to adults and lay eggs. This is called the liver lung migration and it occurs mainly in puppies. In older dogs a significant variation occurs. Not all the larvae undergo maturation in the lungs. <coughs> Some pass straight through, from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart, from where they can be scattered and seeded anywhere in the body. There they become walled off, encysted, and lie dormant, sometimes for the rest of the dog's life. However, they can be awakened by a signal. 
In pregnant bitches, such a signal is released when birth is imminent. Hundreds of larvae will flow into the mammary glands, contaminating the mother's milk. Even more amazing are those that cross the placenta directly into the pup's circulation, ensuring that most pups are actually born with worms. Isn't that brilliant? You just couldn't make it up, could you? Adult worms can only live in members of the dog family. They make their home in the small intestine where they feed on pre-digested food. It may come as a surprise to know they are not bloodsuckers. An infestation in adult dogs may result in weight loss despite a healthy appetite. There may be some diarrhoea, but often there are no symptoms at all. While pups can build up huge numbers, which may be severe enough to cause fatal blockages. Although adult worms can only develop in members of the dog family, immature worms can infest anything which considers dog poo edible. Whether it be a slug, or a bird, or a herbivore, or even a person. Whatever, maybe not, why not, think jackal. All these are intermediate hosts, or paratenic hosts. And just as the cycle in adult dogs results in encysted dormant larvae in muscle and organs, this occurs in intermediate hosts too. And there is also a trigger which releases these larvae from dormancy. It's not pregnancy, it's consumption. Eating the larva by eating the intermediate host, by a dog or a dog-like being. These immature worms pose a major health risk to people. If they insist within muscle, they are mostly harmless, but those that insist in the eye or the brain are most certainly not. Be sensible. Worm your dog regularly with stuff that works, and don't eat dog poo. And don't forget to take your dog poo home with you. <laughs>